how are we how are we doing it's robin nolan here and i'm just hosting this show to help you with your guitar playing help you with your gypsy jazz guitar playing and i basically wanted to share a few simple and basic ideas that can help you in your core gypsy jazz skills you can see the title here and we're talking about rhythm we're talking about soloing and we're talking about repertoire right these three things together we need to know songs we need to know the rhythm to play on the songs and we need to be able to solo on those songs and sound really cool and meaningful so welcome to the show this will be really cool and i appreciate you being here um let me just let me just show you something welcome to the show it's really good to see you um why don't you let me know where you're watching from in, in the comments and uh i'm in australia um, I'm in Amsterdam, so welcome. This will be a fun session. Uh, I'm going to be here for a while. I'm going to go through quite a lot of stuff. This is action-packed, and I'll be doing some Q&A &Q as well, so it should be fun. And I hope you're having a great day, by the way. Um, the whole thing that we've got going today, you probably heard already that it's Black Friday, and we've got a version of Black Friday where I've bundled four incredible masterclasses together uh, which have only previously been available actually in the gypsy jazz club and i've bundled them together for the first time to make them available to the public to everyone to you and you're gonna love them right we've got lap pump right getting your rhythm right we've got boss dorado like a boss we've got jimmy rosenberg course and we've got solo and made easy so if you're interested in really kind of making some progress with your playing and learning a really fun way and a really good way then go to gypsyjazzblackfriday.com uh, there's a fantastic opportunity to learn right there and it's only available today i think tomorrow as well uh, so go check that out um and uh yeah if you don't know my name is robin Nolan, and uh, i'm a gypsy jazz guitar player and teacher who it's kind of made it his life mission to help others learn this music and kind of learn it in a fun way and my style of teaching is very to the point doesn't dwell on theory and it's very bite-sized so learning in little bite-sized uh, ways so welcome to the show this will be great um look we've got a comment here i just want to bring it on the screen thanks for the comments the comments mean a lot and uh it basically keeps me going so thanks for that lovely comment um love and respect from germany yeah thanks a lot man uh, alan's in from canada so what we're going to do in this is i'm going to start with rhythm and uh i'm going to give you some real basic tips on getting the la pomp rhythm right um let's uh just uh get that comment thanks for the comments they really mean a lot and I'm going to show you this uh, one course which I've made to help with the rhythm. And uh, it's this one, which is called Get Your Rhythm Right, La Pomp and Latin. Mm -hmm. And in the beginning of this course, right, it's really involved. There's a whole book that goes with it, charts and tabs and everything. But in the beginning, the first exercise that I do, um, which is really kind of crystal clear, so there's no mistake on what's going. When we play this rhythm, right, you kind of hear it like this. It kind of sounds like a... Right, it kind of sounds like this. It sounds like that. But the first place to start, this is a really solid tip, is to forget about the right hand in the beginning and just go for the left hand and um if you can see up close there all i'm going to do and it's just a little exercise you can do in the beginning is just for the beats one two and three and four is just kind of right just kind of squeeze your left hand and fret the chord i'm just using this just this really simple gypsy jazz chord just a f sharp and c right we use that loads in this music but whatever the chord is or whatever the song just do this exercise 
I'm going to do minor swing. And I'm just going to just going to tap down on that chord each beat of the bar, right? So it's one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three. And you can see it comes down and it obviously lifts back up. And that's what creates the pulse and the swing in the music. And all the right hand is doing is just kind of like just pushing it along, really. It's kind of going, right? Do it without the right hand first. One, two, three, four. Just squeeze that chord. Make it all nice and crispy. One, two, three, four. And then add the right hand. All right, you've got that. If you didn't do this with your left hand, it would just sound like this, right? All right, there will be no punctuation with the swing. So we're trying to go in the beginning. We'll kind of keep it really simple. And my advice um, is to whatever songs that you learn is to be able to play a few choruses of rhythm in a really simple style before you get too fancy and just keep the tempo. Like if we were playing together and you could play, let's say, Dark Eyes, you know, and just play this rhythm. Right, it's just using that. If you could play nice and cleanly, staccato, crispy, dry, no nonsense rhythm like that, I would be really happy as a soloist uh, because you wouldn't be getting in the way and uh, I think it would be a really great place to start. So if I take Dark Eyes, I'll do the same example. And I'm just gonna, with my left hand, right, I'm just going A7, D minor, A7, right like that. And then you just add the right hand. Don't overthink it and just let it fall through the strings. One, two, three, four, right? And just begin with this very basic rhythm. Whatever level you're at, I think it's a good little exercise to see if you can just play really simple rhythm uh, with all the songs you know. And I can tell you that as a soloist, I love it when the rhythm player just plays simple rhythm without all kind of loads of all that stuff, which kind of gets in the way. So that's just one little tip on the rhythm. Let me just check the comments here. Um, lots of comments coming in, which is great. Um, what we got, Louis, uh, uh, yeah, loads of people in. Um, let me just show you the uh, Gypsy Jazz Black Friday, right? If you're interested in these courses that are bundled at an amazing discount, then go to Gypsy Jazz Black Friday. La Pomp and Latin is just one, Get Your Rhythm Right is just one of the courses in that bundle. Um, and we also, in, in that course, right, we look at, uh, the Rosenberg swing, which is with the upstroke. So then you've got this. And it's the same thing with the left hand, right? Uh, 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 uh. Except with the right hand, you've got, uh, you've got the upstroke. So you're just going one, two, three, four, 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 one, right? So in the La Pomp, in the rhythm course, get your rhythm right. Um, we, uh, that's a great comment. Uh, in the rhythm course, we go through every rhythm possible. Now, um, I'm going to carry on now and show you a little bit about soloing. Kind of like the, the way that I taught the rhythm there, the very basics. I want to show you the very basics of playing solo. And it's kind of just using triads, really. And when you get a, uh, let me just take that away. Um, La Pompe and Latin, yeah. How you doing? Good to see you. Um, right, I've got this thing called Dark Eyes Solo and Simplified. And what happens here is, is that I'm just, for every chord you're going to improvise over, and say we're, we're looking at Dark Eyes, right? We've got A7, right? We've only got four chords in Dark Eyes. You've got A7. Then you've got D minor. You've got A7. Then you've got B flat. Then you've got G minor. You've got D minor. Then you've got A7. And then you've got D minor. Right. 
So the first place to start, like if I was teaching my kid how to improvise or so-called improvising, we would just start with the triads, right? So the basic triads that you can play over each chord. And if we're taking and if we're taking the first chord, A7, right, A7, we're not even going to worry about the seventh or the flat nine or any of that stuff. We're just going to call it A major, right? And we're just going to take the, right, a triad like that. You know, a triad is just three notes out of the chord, like, and we've got A. Right? There's only three notes in that chord. So you just pick a triad, and for example, on A, you can pick it here. We're just going to map out our triads for each of these four chords in dark eyes. When it goes to D minor, we're just going to go. Right, there's D minor. A7, we're just using the A major. We're using D minor. A7. When it goes to B flat, obviously, we're just going to go up one fret. G minor. Just mapping out these triads. D minor, A7, and there's D minor. And there's other positions for that as well. A, right, there's D minor. So we're just mapping them out so far. B flat, G minor. D minor, A, back to D minor. And then what you're going to do is just with the backing track, um, you're just going to play, you know, kind of go like one, two, three, four. Right? This is the first steps. Kind of just playing the chords. Go through the dark eyes and then all you're gonna do is just start to get like do something like G minor then A you kind of kind of be playful with those triads um, and you're going to start improvising that way. It's just the first steps. Um, now, I hope everyone's doing well. It's Robin Nolan here. Um, let me see if there's any questions. Um, here we go. Have you got a question or a comment? Let me know, and I'll do my best. It's Robin Nolan here. It's Black Friday. I've got four incredible courses which are bundled together. Um, only Gypsy Jazz Club members have enjoyed these courses so far, and now I've kind of made them available to the public. And if there's a Gypsy Jazz Club member here who's used any of these courses, be, don't be shy. Just uh, type a comment. Let me know how they work for you. And, um, yeah, so there's the link there. You can see the link in the comments there. Um, so that's Dark Eyes Solo and Simplified. And basically, we start with the triads, right? And then we embellish on the triads. We're using closures on the triads, like, you know. Right? So, for example, an enclosure is that sound. When you do it on a dominant seventh, they go like this. You, you, there's the, the notes from the triad. When you do the, the uh, enclosure, you need to go one below. make music like that right like that and then you do one step above so right so there's a7 go it's a lot you can do just with enclosures on the a7 there um philip's got a question how to hold correctly the pick that's a great question. I've got a very unorthodox, if you see my thumb, it's uh, double jointed. So I've got a double joint, double jointed thumb there. The correct way would be to have the pick in the first finger like that, right? 
and then the thumb the thumb comes across and you hold it like that right see that I don't know if you can see that that's the correct way right but I've got this double jointed thumb bang she got this funny bend in it so I'm kind of manipulating the pick a bit like that so I'm very unorthodox with the uh, plectrum technique um, but it's a good question Philippe any questions just type them in I'll do my best and in the meantime let me show you uh, let me show you what I mean with dark eyes. I'm going to show you a little bit from the course itself. Hopefully I'll be able to, uh, yeah, here we go. I'm going to um, show you a little bit here. So this thing that we're talking about is Gypsy Jazz Core Skills Masterclasses. we got four together. And you can see we've got these four courses, right? When you enroll, you got get get your gypsy rhythm right. You got solo and simplified. You got Bossa Dorado like a boss and Jimmy Rosenberg soloing secrets. I'm going to get to that shortly. That is pretty outstanding. Um, Dark Eyes solo and simplified. You can see. Uh, wait, let me just let me just alter the way this looks, and you can see that the course it really starts from the beginning, right? Uh, let me just get that back. So we start with the rhythm chords, right? You need to learn the chords. We learn the melody to Dark Eyes because the melody is a great place to start with, with improvising. And we got backing tracks, which you get access to at two different tempos. And then what I was talking about there is these triads. See this? The triads. And um, that's the first step, really, to map out the triads. Um, then we pick the triads, we've got inversions, we've got arpeggios, we've got downstairs neighbors, upstairs neighbors. That's what I was talking about, those enclosures. And we've got, you can even noodle through the whole progression in D minor. And you've got arpeggios. And I've even done an example solo here for you. Um, but that's the course. And you can obviously just take it at your own pace from the comfort of your own home. Um, let me show you the Gypsy Bossa one. This is pretty cool. And maybe we'll look at the Gypsy Bossa rhythm. But Bossa Dorado is one of the big tunes. And um, let's uh, just get this off. Right. And I'll bring that back. And uh, let's get into something from Bossa Dorado. So uh, you've probably heard the tune Bossa Dorado. <laughs> try the backing track let's just see how it goes um, I'm gonna try and play along with the backing track Bossa Dorado backing track yeah so this is Bossa Dorado maybe the internet's a little slow I'm not sure you know what maybe the internet's too slow Not to worry, not to worry. Let's just get rid of that. All right, so here I am back. Um, having a little issue with the speed of the internet, so finding it hard to share the videos from these courses that I've been talking about. Um, but I was just looking at improvising for beginners using triads, you know, just any song that you're going to improvise on. Uh, the first step is to kind of look at the triads you know so if it's minor swing look at triads there's, there's there's an a minor one there's a d minor one there's an e major one which we just use for e7 there's an a minor one and you kind of map out those triads in a couple of different places and then you can start to just use a can just kind of um, start to have fun with it there um, not on the subject could you answer later if you can't afford a gypsy if you can't afford a guitar gypsy jazz style what would it be good replacement any guitar with six strings I assure you is great if you can tune it up then you're in business acoustics nice but also electric I used to play on a cheap classical for years 
before I could afford a gypsy guitar. Um, so don't get caught up with it, but uh, you can use a Spanish guitar, you can use any acoustic guitar. Sounds great. Six strings definitely would help. Uh, so yeah, any questions you've got, let me know. I'm also going to show you um, um, what have we got? <laughs> yeah, we're talking about Boss Dorado like a boss. Yeah, we've got these courses. Um, La Pomp and Latin, Dark Eyes. Yeah, so this other course we've got, which is in this uh, thing, is Jimmy Rosenberg. You must know Jimmy Rosenberg. He's like the number one player, my favorite player anyway, in gypsy jazz. And he's an incredible genius. And we made this course together where we looked at that tune made for Wesley, which is... <laughs> Just going to answer a question now that you've got now that i see one um that guy joshua De david says how do you do you do sweeping yeah um a little bit let me just uh, get rid of that yeah so it's a good question and for example a real basic version a basic example of sweeping would just be if you just take the a minor there Right, a minor. Right, I'm just gonna get above that chord. So you can actually just sweep through that chord. So instead of going, you can go. It's a really basic version of sweeping. Instead of playing, instead of like picking every note, you kind of just sweep through it. That's one example. Uh, I do this thing as well. If you just fret this chord, this A6 chord, A, C sharp, E, A, C sharp, F, you can kind of do this thing where you just kind of go, you sweep through it, and you go down, 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 and then up. And sweeping is where you, you know, it's like rest strokes where you fall on the next string under it. Kind of, it sounds really impressive. You can kind of go. So if it's going along like, like, dun, dun, it's quite a nice little effect, and it's just like kind of rolling through a chord. So just like rolling through a chord like that. Um, so I hope that helps uh, you. Uh, Joshua David and Wes says he likes that one thanks Wes man um, Jazzia says this is a great way uh, to go for the courses yeah the courses are fantastic uh, they come with these books as well uh, so each course has got you know like this uh, PDF book which has got all the tab all the notation and stuff so you can kind of work along with that and uh, refer to the videos. Yeah, thanks, Josh. Thanks, man. Um, that's a good question from Philippe. He says, for the arpeggios, must I know every note or learn the automatic design? Um, I, th I think it's better to learn the shapes, actually, Philippe, like you say. So instead of like, uh, like a, an arpeggio like... <laughs> Instead of going like F, A, C, F, A, C, it's kind of like, for me, it works better just with the shape. So, you know, you know you're in D major. You know you're in G. Or you've got another arpeggio like G minor. You know, it's just kind of like that. So, I don't think you need to know all the notes, Philippe. It's better to know the shape in one key and then try to move it to other keys. I hope that helps, Philippe. Um, Bruno's got a question. Um, and Bruno says, uh, one second. 
Uh, here we go. Bruno's got a question. Hello, Robin. Love your work. How do you improvise and what do you think when you're playing Nuage, the first chorus? Great question. Um, so in, in Nuage, right, we've got B flat minor, E flat seven, A half diminished, D seven, G major, right? So when I'm, when I'm improvising, uh, the chords are moving quite a lot in Nuage. So we got... thinking if I if I actually if I if I reverse engineer it when I'm on G right when I've arrived on G that's easy obviously I'm just thinking all my nice G major ideas going into G we've got a half diminished D7 G major and in this in this instance I've got a few ways uh, if you take the a half diminished here d7 to g i do this line i play like g minor so even though it's going to g major i go see that's g minor right g minor harmonic right scale and i'm just kind of go and then it lands on the G major. Um, so it's going. Here we go. And then you resolve to the G major there. Um, so that's what I do over the half, the half diminished into G. And before that, you got B flat minor seven, E flat seven. So I'm just going uh, really simply thinking a two five, right? Two five. So if I'm looking at chords, I would go. Right, so I'm trying to spell out that B flat minor. I'm kind of going. Right, that's B flat minor. Right, so that will be one example of um, improvise. What I'm thinking when I'm improvising through nuage. That's just one thing. Uh, I'm trying to I'm trying to be as melodic as possible and try to create new melodies. That's also something I try. Um, so hope that helps, Bruno. Uh, good evening, Thomas. Thomas is in from Germany. Welcome, Thomas. Don't forget to like this video. Uh, like and share it with your friends and that would really be appreciated from me so like and share the video and just leave me a comment or ask a question I'm here just hanging out and uh, having fun and just sharing a few tips on playing this music um, which is oh here we go here we go we got a question and City of Logic says hi Robin Hey, City of Logic, can you show me one minor six, my major six, major, wait a minute, minor six, major six lick to play over two, five, one. Um, City of Logic, you mean two, five, one into a major key or two, five, one into a minor key? Tell me major or minor, and then I will show you the lick, the lick. So Bruno's asking for a two five one lick, right? So a two five one in C, um, two five one in C, or two five. Let's go G, right? Two five one in G. There's G major, so we got A minor seven, D seven G, right? So one lick that I play, because um, you get that progression all the time, right? <laughs> So two, the two five lick would be. So I would just go, this is one lick that I sometimes you, I, I use. Um, oh yeah, this is the lick. So 
So the, the lick goes like this. We're going A minor 7, D7, G. So think of A minor 9. Right? And I'm going... Basically like that. But it stems from this, this minor nine. Down the A minor to the seven. Then D seven and we go. Right on the D seven we just go. Right, and then it sounds like this. Sound like that. Uh, so I hope that helps, man. And yeah, he said major. Yeah, you're welcome, man. So there's a two five one lick in G. And yeah, it's a good idea to kind of memorize a few licks which you know where you can use them. I think we all do that. Uh, so, yeah, thanks for the question, man. Any questions or comments, type them in. Please like and share this video. And if you would like to take the opportunity to get something special and treat yourself, then go to gypsyjazzblackfriday.com. We've got an amazing package we put together of four masterclasses. Uh, the Jimmy Rosenberg Masterclass, Dark Eyes Soloing Made Easy. We've got Lap Pomp and, and Latin. We've got the Get Your Rhythm Right Masterclass. And we've got Bossa Dorado Like a Boss. Four step-by-step -step courses with books and PDFs and charts and tab and videos and backing tracks that you can just kind of work along in your own pace in the comfort of your own home. So that's where you go, Gypsy Jazz Black Friday. Um, how are you doing? Hope you're all doing well. Uh, I'm in Amsterdam and I'm trying out this uh, software where I can show you images and bring comments onto the screen, uh, which is kind of fun. And this is the first time I'm using this. So um, uh, thanks for the comment, Ronald. Ronald just says, outstanding. I really appreciate that. Thank you so much. And if you're enjoying this, um, this show, <laughs> then um, yeah, like, give us a like and uh leave us a comment uh yeah thanks <laughs> thanks ronald that's very kind um we started off this class by looking at a really basic way uh step one of learning the rhythm um yeah awesome ralph is a gypsy jazz club member that's cool man crispy chords it's all about the crispy chords because we've got <laughs> Like, a, like a, a lick in A minor using crispy chords, right? Where the me melody line is this. And then you've got these chords. When you play it in time, we've got to go sounds kind of really crispy and really slick um and th this first chord right is just a minor we're playing over a minor we've got this chord here this is a really good one but right. if you take a diminished shape on the 10th fret right diminished on the 10th fret and then raise the pinky one right to the 11 to the 12 sorry then you've got a minus six right that's a really kind of crunchy crispy chord and you can use that uh, all over the place in this music when the rhythm is going yeah we use that a lot and then this lick goes so we finish off here, A minor 9, right? That's really, 
that's kind of safe and nice and easy to play. We proceed the A minor 9 with this. Right, so this is like kind of thinking E7, diminished on the 6th fret. Right. Right, so you got diminished on the 6th fret, except raise the pinky one. And you use that in the lick then to the a minor nine so when you put that together it's kind of right and when you've played it a few times you go kind of like that and like ronald says that is a minor crispy slick a crispy lick um yeah, perfect. Wes says, uh, love your work. Thanks, Wes. Thank you so much. Minor swing. Will you show us the one minor six shape that functions for all chords? Yeah, so a couple of shapes that are really important in this music. The first one, uh, a lot of you probably know this, of course, but that's A minor six, right? On the fifth fret, because it's got the A in the bass, right? And then... Right, so that's A minor, just those three notes, right? So we don't hear we don't hear the other notes from the guitar. We're just right, we can use that for A minor. We could use it, for example, for D minor, slid up to the tenth fret, um, the same function, right? But we can also use it, for example, E seven instead of playing right, E seven, we can use it here. So we can use that same shape on the seventh fret, and it becomes E seven right so there's the function as it's a minor right it's also let's stick with the one chord this one chord is a minor six this one chord is d7 right and it's right and also it could be diminished right right an actual diminished chord um and then the other shape which is really useful is this chord for example uh, you can see that chord there we use that a lot for the minor voicing so the root is on the top right this is a d minor six the d is in the pinky and then the six minor third the fifth you've got this shape which is just like the diminished shape right down a string and that's D minor six, so we play kind of rhythm. Right, with that shape. And also, obviously, it's B minor seven flat five, right? And we're going to A minor. Right, so it's B half diminished. And also, G seven. Right, we can use it as bomb. So really useful shapes. All the shapes go a long way. You don't really need to know that many shapes. Uh, but when you know where you can use them, and you're only only ever going to play like major chords or minor chords or dominant seventh chords, that's all you need. So good question, Wes. Thanks for that, man. Um, what have we got? Yeah, Morris is in. Good to see you, man. Frank Boland. Uh, wish you could come to Glasgow or Scotland and play a concert maybe with Martin. That sounds like a great idea. I would love to do that, uh, Frank. Maybe one day. How's everybody doing? Let me know in the comments. Are you doing all right? Are you feeling inspired? I'm here hopefully to help with that. Just sharing a few little tips and thoughts on playing this music to try and help you in a simple way. Um, and, you know, my teaching's all bite sized little lessons and um yeah we've got this amazing um black friday offer on today which is you know if you've been sitting there waiting to you know get something from me then this is the day to do it because there's a great saving and these courses uh the best 
training on the internet for this kind of music. You're going to learn the repertoire in Bossa Dorado, Dark Eyes. You're going to learn how to solo from the beginning, right? Using triads, using enclosures. You're going to learn, you're going to even going to learn some Jimmy Rosenberg licks, right? We've got this course, Jimmy Rosenberg plays made for Wesley. And also you're going to learn the rhythm. And this is step-by-step -step courses, okay? Literally you go step one, step two, with the PDF, right? You work it with the tab and with the video and you work at your own pace. And it's a really great way to learn. Um, um, let's see, are there any budget gypsy jazz guitars? The bu budget ones, oh, I think Gitan, Saga Gitans are fine. Saga Cigano is the one of the cheapest you'll find, but they are fine. They work great, okay? Um, yeah, actually, I think I'm going to be in LA in April, uh, doing a little, a little workshop, a little gig. So um, I'll post some info about that soon. But it's always good to be in LA. Yeah. So here's a question from Stephen, and Stephen says, "Hi, Robin. Thanks so much for the lesson." Uh, love it. Thanks so much. What picks do you use? I use a 2.5 millimeter, but it often slips or falls out of my hand. Um, right now, I'm using this. Check it out. I am using that. It's a Dunlop USA 1.5 millimeter. And they work. I'm not too fussy on picks. And we're always losing picks. So I kind of buy... I often have a load of kind of these Dunlops uh, in my pocket and I've got the two millimeter as well. And um, yeah, that's the pick I'm using right now, Stephen. And yeah, fall, it's, a, it's a pain when they fall out your hand. Um, it can be because you're sweaty or something. Uh, try not to squeeze the pick too much. Quite, try and keep it like a magician with coins. Try to keep it kind of balanced on your finger with just a little bit of pressure from your thumb, not really gripping it too hard or squeezing it too hard. That's a good tip. Um, so it doesn't, because when you're squeezing it too hard, it doesn't help the music, obviously, and it, it can fall out your hands. So try to just be relaxed in the way you hold the pick and keep it, uh, yeah, keep it cool. Um, yeah, you're welcome, man. Um, any any questions? I'm here to help you right now, and I'm just jumping on to share the news about Black Friday. This amazing thing that we put together. Great opportunity if you've been waiting to learn from me in a step by step way with all the tabs and charts written out. Um, you will love this way of learning. Yeah, GypsyJazzBlackFriday.com. Uh, yeah, someone's got a Cigano, and it's a, it's a great starter guitar. You're right there. Um, absolutely. Um, so I hope you're all doing well. I'm just going to recap what we've been going on here. It's Robin Nolan. Uh, this is my name. Look, I'm going to put it up on the screen. And uh, I hope you're having a great day. And we looked at swing, la pompe rhythm. And we looked at the way that, you know, the left hand works. Obviously, the right hand's really important, but don't get caught up overthinking it. It's literally just one, two, three, four, right? Not really hitting it hard. And the left hand is just squeezing those chords. So it's like. Right, this is really basic lap on. Right, and we're just making sure that we're keeping those we're just making sure that we're keeping those chords nice and staccato to keep the rhythm simple and if you can play through a song playing this rhythm i will be really happy nothing happening nothing's happening just keeping it simple So just squeeze that left hand for each pulse of the beat. Just don't overthink it. Let the pick fall through the chord. Keep it crispy. Move your body. Get into the swing.
the best thing is to put on Django and the Hot Club of France before you play, switch it off, and then play. Say no more. You'll be inspired and you'll be swinging. Um, so, we, yeah, we looked at some rhythm, and we've got a whole course, right? Get your rhythm right. This is one of the four courses that is bundled today for this Black Friday offer. Get your rhythm right. And it's a wonderful... Um, it's a wonderful course which will take you from step one to step 20 something all the rhythms all the swing rhythms all the latin rhythms the exercises and backing tracks to help you get your rhythm right um got any gigs lined up not so many gigs unfortunately um unfortunately not at the moment mate so it's i'm here on on i'm, I'm in zoom and i'm on i'm on, on youtube i'm on facebook um but i'm trying my best to keep the vibe going um yeah cheers uh, josh has got to go um yeah i'm just recapping what happened in this class we looked at la pomp and latin um we looked at some really basic ways that you can uh start your journey into improvising and there's one way you can do which kind of it doesn't really involve scales and kind of thinking too technically but if you know the chords of a piece if you know the chords of dark eyes a7 to d minor just take the triad just right there's a not even a7 just take a and then d minor all this is written in this course that you can see right here there's a PDF with all the tab and everything written out. So um, I haven't really got time to go through it all now, but you're going to learn how to apply the triads to any song and then what to do with the triads, how to make music out of them. So the first step, for example, is to look at the downstairs neighbor. So you've got D minor, right? Right? Really simple example. You're playing over D minor. You pick the D minor triad. And then just the downstairs neighbor is there's the... Then, you can start to make music just by going one fret below each note in the triad and it's a really good good way to start and the dark eyes solo and simplified course takes you through those steps so by the end you can actually kind of make meaningful solos and you're not out your depth and you're not getting clogged up by theory uh, so that's that we've got the brilliant uh jimmy rosenberg course which if you're a jimmy rosenberg fan like i am then this is something that you've got to see it's jimmy rosenberg teaching this tune made for wesley right. it's a great tune and uh it's do do this really cool tune called Made for Wesley. And we learn the tune and the chords and how to solo on that tune with none other than Jimmy Rosenberg. So what could be a better way to learn that tune and with Jimmy? So really proud to feature Jimmy in this course and it's part of the Black Friday bundle, right? So really great opportunity to learn from the best, right? And then the other course that we've got, which is really cool, which is a big song in the repertoire. It's Bossa Dorado Like a Boss, and it's all about Bossa Dorado. You'll learn the tune. It's this one. Right? So you'll learn the rhythm, like... So you'll learn Bossa Dorado. And not only will you learn the rhythm and the chords and the melody, but you'll learn how to solo on that tune. I've got done for you solos and ways to approach solo and using licks and arpeggios. That is a really, it's an amazing course. So these four courses together um, is just a brilliant way to learn this music. And I've, you know, I've picked these courses to really help you with your core skills, right? To learn the repertoire. You'll learn Made for Wesley, you'll learn Dark Eyes, right? You'll learn Bossa Dorado. 
and then you learn how to solo on those tunes gypsy blue someone says yeah nice and then you'll learn how to do the rhythm with a dedicated rhythm course so it's a brilliant package and um, great opportunity um so um i'm gonna jump off in a second so just want to uh, thank you for watching if you haven't liked or shared this video yet then do that for me i really appreciate it a like and a share and a comment really helps get this music out there to the world <laughs> and uh appreciate you being here live and if you're watching in the future hope it's going well gypsyjazzblackfriday.com go there see what it's all about and um i don't know that tune someone's asking for chords from caprice angelo de bar um i don't know um altered mode yeah that's a good question there's a there's a um there's a lesson that Jimmy Rosenberg does in his course. So uh, where's Jimmy? Yeah. There's a, when I asked Jimmy what to play over B7, right? He went this. Right, this sound. So that was the first thing. And then he got then you did a load of diminished stuff but this altered sound this kind of um whatever you call it it's that sound isn't it right when you know where to use it uh which is really cool so you got b7 there rest the cool so you got b7 and you could start on the b you could go nice thing is it's the same pattern so you got right you slide then so once you learn that on one string then you go to the next string upper fret and you just repeat that pattern you see slide 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 so you're only using uh sorry you're only using those two fingers right sorry i can't get that one out of the way but you kind of go on. right that fits really good over b7 so i hope that answers your question rest of cool um semitones yeah semitones it's semitone, tone, semitone, tone, like one fret, two fret, one fret, two fret, just repeats like that. Pink Panther gets a bit like that as well. Good point. Um, thanks, Philippe. Great. Uh, appreciate the comment a lot. And um, it's good to see everybody here. And I will be doing more of this. Welcome. Have a beautiful day. Uh, thanks, Larry. And um, yeah, let me just quickly get back to, uh, yeah, that Jimmy Rosenberg course. Honestly, if you like Jimmy and want to learn from him, the first time that I've asked him to play slow things, so uh, you can actually learn slowly from him because usually you ask Jimmy what he does and he goes like that. So it's, it's kind of nice. Um, anyway, uh, that, that's the Jimmy course. So thanks for watching. It's been great to be here. And um, it's been all about uh, these gypsy jazz core skills, repertoire, soloing, rhythm. That's what we're talking about. We've got to improve all those areas. And these courses will help you do it in a step-by-step -step way from the comfort of your own home. Put a lot of thought into these courses, and they've already helped a lot of people. Uh, only available so far in the Gypsy Jazz Club. And Gypsy Jazz Club members have really improved uh, because of these courses, and it's a joy to see that. So um, I look forward to helping you too. Um, I'm going to jump off. It's uh, been a pleasure to be here for you. And I wish you a beautiful weekend. And uh, I will see you really soon. And like I always say, and like I always mean, stay inspired. See you later, guys.